Hey there folks, Hutch here with Freedom in a Can, coming to you with another DIY solar installation. Once again, we're putting in a new product that comes from the good folks at Renogy. Today we're going to be upgrading our inverter. For those of you who are new to this, the inverter takes the 12 volt direct current power coming from your solar panel and battery and converts it to 120 volt alternating current so that you can run a typical household appliance. We're upgrading because our old 400 watt inverter wasn't quite powerful enough. Also, it had become a little noisy with the cooling fan kicking on frequently. So we're hoping for less noise and more power. We're also going to be upgrading some of the wiring in our system. In a previous video where we installed a new lithium iron phosphate battery and charge controller, we got a lot of comments about the size of our wiring being too small. Though we never had any problem, at 10 AWG, it wasn't the appropriately sized wire for the amperage of our battery and inverter. We'll be upgrading to the 6 AWG, which came with the inverter. We'll also be putting in a small fuse box so that our lights, fan, and USB charging port will be going through a fuse connection rather than just connecting directly to the battery. To install the inverter, we first need to establish a ground wire. Here I'm just going to use 18 gauge wire which will connect to the metal frame of the trailer. I have a convenient hole just in front of the battery where our trailer wiring, solar panel wiring, and our gas cooking line come through. So we'll just poke our ground wire through and connect it to a bolt on the frame later. So we'll just connect the ground wire with a ring terminal to the grounding stem and tighten up the nut. Next we'll connect the included 6 AWG wire to the inverter terminals. Now that the wires are in place, we can mount the inverter to the wall, which is pretty easy because of the mounting brackets attached to the unit. One thing to point out here is that we're installing this in the same compartment as the battery, which in our case is appropriate because we have a lithium iron phosphate battery. If we had a standard deep cycle lead acid battery, we would want to separate these into two different compartments because of the potential for fire. Lead acid batteries can give off vapor while charging which could be ignited by a spark from the inverter. Renogy recommends a distance of no more than five feet between battery and inverter to reduce power loss. Nothing left to do but hook up the inverter wire to the battery terminals and we should be all good to go. One super cool thing about this inverter is that it comes with a remote on and off switch. This allows you the freedom to install the inverter in the extra space in your rig while still allowing access to turning it on and off inside the main cabin. We're going to put ours next to the door so that when we come in from the outside, we can just switch on the inverter and our house sconce lighting will come on. The remote comes with about 18 feet of line, giving you some options for locating the switch. Here's the final look at the compartment with everything installed. Three different sets of DC appliance wires coming out of the fuse box, some big honking wires going from the battery to the inverter, which powers two separate standard 120 volt outlets as well as our sconce lighting above the stove and dinette table. If you'd like to learn more about our solar powered rig, check out our other videos on this channel or visit us on our website at freedominacan.com. Thanks for watching.